Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack. We've had some excellent propagation over the last few days on VHF and there have been quite a lot of questions in forums recently about how to set up the IC9700 with the WSJTX software. I thought I'd do a quick video today covering driver installation, rig connection, COM ports, how to config the radio and then configuring and running the software itself including adding frequencies. Today's the 3rd of January and on the screen here you can hopefully see my Logger 32 setup. Now I'm in a particularly terrible VHF location at the bottom of a hill but you can see I've managed to work France, the Netherlands, Germany, some UK stations and this one here OK1 VVT that's in the Czech Republic that's over a thousand kilometers away all with FT8 on two meters over the past few days so it's well worth having a bash at this um, I'm gonna reset the rig to factory defaults and then we can get on with it so the first thing I'm going to do uh, so that you're quite sure there's no sorcery going on here is reset my radio back to factory defaults uh, which is a fairly brave thing to do I guess but uh, let's just do it anyway all reset go on yes am I sure yes so that's put my rig right back to how it was when we first switched it on so what I'm going to do now is just go through with you what settings I need to change just the minimum settings I need to change to get this to work with WSJT so my objective with this video is to do things as simply as I possibly can. There are lots of ways we can configure the rig, but I'm going to do it in the simplest way. Once you've got it working in the simple way, you can fiddle with it all you like, can't you? Now, the first thing we want to do is switch off dual watch. I don't want to be monitoring two bands at the same time. So simply press and hold the sub receiver audio control. I'm then going to change modes from FM to SSB we're in upper sideband by default I'm going to press on press and hold on filter 2 and I'm going to select the bandwidth and I'm going to stretch that to be 3.6k I'm then going to go menu and select meter mode for the time being that's all I'm going to do to the rig no actual changes to the menus at all So the first thing we're going to do is install the driver and we're going to do that before and I underline and write in big letters before we connect the radio to the PC. I typed into my friend Mr. Google IC9700 USB driver download and it's pointed me at this page here. The uh, actual physical device that creates the USB ports is common to a lot of different radios. Um, you'll see the 9700 is on this list as are a lot of other icons. So this driver suits a lot of different rigs but you can download this, uh, agree to the terms and download this. And Once you've downloaded it, install it. And once you've installed it then and only then are we going to connect the USB cable between the rig and the PC. Once you connect the cable you should see the Windows software installing a few bits and bobs and then we need to do some checks that things have done what we expect. Now I'm using Windows 10 now regrettably. If you right click on the Windows icon and you come up here to left click now on Device Manager that should open up Device Manager and we're looking for two particular things. In the Ports Common LPT section we should see two new things. Now this these two things here are my IC9700. Now I don't know which is which, one is the standard and one is the enhanced, but it doesn't really matter, we'll figure that out later. So we've got two COM ports that have installed, make sure you haven't got any exclamation marks here to suggest that there are problems with them. And similarly if you go into the sound video and game controllers you should have a thing called a USB audio codec. Now that is the audio device from the radio. Now again if you right click on your start menu and you open up the control panel which I thought was in there but clearly isn't so let's search for it. Control panel, let's open up control panel and make sure you're looking view by small icons and then if you come in here and open up this sound option here this should show us what the different sound devices that we've got on the computer are. Now, playback, so that's going from the computer out, so in our case that's from the computer 
to the radio. Um, let's scroll down. Speakers, USB audio codec. That is the device that we're interested in. And a really good idea, if you double click on it, you can give this a new name. So I'm going to call it IC9700 Audio 2 Radio, if I can spell it correctly. Right, so that's given the uh, output device a name. And then recording, so that's from the rig to the PC. Similarly, we need to find the device from the USB audio codec. And it's that one there, microphone USB audio codec. So I'm going to call that IC9700 audio from radio. Okay, okay. So that's all we need to do with the driver, the audio device and the COM ports. So the next thing we're going to do, if we haven't done it already, is download and install WSJTX. Um, again, I just did a quick Google search on WSJTX software download, and it's taken me to this page here, which is the right page, of course. Now, there are a number of release candidates that get sent um, or made available from time to time. Generally speaking, you want the most recent general availability release, which in this case is version 2.12 as of the 3rd of January 2020. Um, I would want the 64-bit, Windows 64-bit uh, version of the software, which is here. You can download that. That will download you an executable, and that executable you can then use to install the software. Um, I'm not going to go through the installation process because I've already done that, but you will just follow the basic instructions and install the software. Once you've done that, you will run it for the first time. Uh, when I run mine, I get this. I get these two windows here. Let me move this one out the way for a second. So the first thing we're going to do is go into File, Settings. Uh, you need to put your call sign. I assume you've got one. And your grid locator. I assume you know that. Um, a couple of things here that I quite like. I quite like blank line between decoding periods. And I want to see my distance in miles. Don't understand this newfangled kilometre thing. Show DXCC grid work before status. Yes, excellent idea. Enable VHF, UHF microwave features. Maybe have a play with it, see what it does. Then you'll understand it a bit better. Double click on call sets TX enable. Let's have that. Calling CQ forces call first. Yes, we want that. OK, now we go to the radio. And this is the good bit. So. In our list, drop down list, we need to find the ICOM 9700, which is there. The serial port we know is either six or seven, we're not sure. So let's try seven first, COM seven. The board rate at the rig end is set to be automatic. Um, I'll put it at 19200. These default options here should be fine. If you find you need to set this, it should be eight data bits, one stop bit, no handshaking. But the default option should be fine. Cat method, sorry, PTT method, I'm going to use cat. I don't want to use Vox. I'm going to do it as simple as possible. Mode, I'm going to use the upper sideband mode on the rig. Split operation, I'm going to set to be rig. So let's now hit the test cat button and see if that works, which it does. And let's test the PTT line. Oh, I can hear that the radio is clicking PTT on off. Excellent. So COM7 was clearly the right one. COM6 wouldn't work. Now, in the audio devices, we need to look for the um, USB audio codec that we saw on the installation earlier. So that's those two devices there, one for in, one for out. And that's about your lot. So let's click OK and let's see what that's done now. You need to select mode FT8 and then in two meters you should find in the drop down box you should find 144174 but your rig should have already be set to that frequency it should have gone into split mode and it should be beginning to decode things the only other thing you want to fiddle with is the uh, the waterfall up here now i tend to stretch mine a bit bins per pixel sets the width of these individual uh, increments so we want to be able to cover up to about three kilohertz uh, but we also want to start frequency that's slightly higher than zero. So I tend to use start 200 hertz, bins per pixel 3, stretch this across the screen. The N averaging I tend to put down to 1 so that it's going as fast as possible. 
I don't tend to use flatten, but there's no real harm if we're doing things as simply as possible. I do quite like banana, and I tend to put that on current. But other than that, that's probably about your lot. So you should find, if there are any signals appearing on the band, which there clearly are, that they'll be decoding and appearing in the band activity box. So now we've got the basic software set up, I just need to talk to you quickly about modulation sources. Now this seems to be the biggest problem for people when they're setting up ICOM radios for use with any uh, kind of AFSK software. So what you need to understand is what these things mean. Now if I go menu, set, connectors, mod input is what we're interested in and that mod is modulation. So the setting we're interested in is data off mod. Now what that means is is the modulation source when the radio is not in data mode. So in conventional upper sideband, lower sideband, FM, AM, whatever it might be, where does the modulation come from? And because I'm doing this in the simplest way possible and we've set we're doing WSJT with the rig in upper sideband mode, I need to tell it where to get the audio from. So data off mod, I'm going to set to be mic comma USB. That means use the audio from the microphone first, and if there's no audio from the microphone, use it from the USB cable. That's not USB as in upper sideband, that's USB as in USB cable, the internal sound card in the rig. It's critical that we set that up correctly. So, very much and finally, but also very, very important, I'm going to talk to you quickly now about setting audio levels. So, when we went into the sound mixer earlier, we set up the names of our devices to be from radio and to radio. So, from the radio is the audio coming from the rig into the, um, into the software. So, that's the levels that are affecting the audio that we see up here. Now, what we want to do I'm going to switch off flatten for a second and you'll see probably that the uh, if we go into this device now and go to the levels tab we should find that this here is now controlling the audio level going into the software you can see that it was very very loud very quiet very loud the recommendation is to adjust this so on a a band without any signals, so effectively with with a quiet band just the band noise we're looking for uh, about 30 dB or so of um, noise level. So if you're going to run with a preamp on the rig or a masthead amp or any of these other things, switch all that on, get the rig into the normal receive such, such circumstances and situation, and then adjust this slider to get yourself about 30 dB on the left. If you find you can't get it low enough, which is possible, there are also sliders within the setup on the radio that you can look at. Have a look at the manual, you'll find it. Now, playback, so this is the audio device from the rig, sorry, from the rig, yes, from the PC to the rig, so this is my transmit audio. Again, I want to think about adjusting the levels. When we set up the radio, we put it in meter mode. I quite like meter mode because I can see both power out and ALC at the same time. If I click somewhere on the spectrum where I know I'm not going to disturb somebody and I click the transmit button, the tune button, that will transmit a carrier using my current frequency that I've got selected up here. And what I want to do is basically, when it's in transmit, I want to adjust this low enough so I've got power out but I've got no ALC. And in my case that's a really low setting again, around or two or so. Again, there will be a slider within the um, rig config that you can use to give yourself a bit more adjustment. But please, please, please adjust it so that you've got zero ALC but full power. And then once you've done that, you're pretty much good to go. So very finally, the last thing I wanted to show you was just adding frequencies. If you go to the file settings, go to the frequencies tab, you'll find that uh, there are a lot of frequencies pre-installed, but I found that FTA isn't here on uh, 70 centimeters, for example. So if we right click somewhere, we go insert, 
in my case I'm in region 1 the mode I'm interested in is FT8 so I'm going to put in the frequency so it's 432.174 click OK for example though say I want to decode um, the JT65 signal from GB3 VHF I would go region 1 I would say mode JT65 not all JT65 and then here I would put 144.4285 one four 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 two eight five yeah that's right and click OK and again that will appear as a two meter option now in the frequency drop down list so if I were to put this in um, JT65 mode like that go to two meters we would find that 428 decimal five so that's the frequency of GB3 VHF I hope you found this useful if you like it please give me a thumbs up and I'd appreciate if you'd subscribe to the channel